Okay, shalom, shalom, kwam ya sa'ala. Kho'ho yimla yahawa ba'ashim ya washai, ba'ashim, rechah ha'kwadash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. That by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to all the Akim, Akwaf, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to the best of their ability. This is Jah Hanan Nawaf. Just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson praying that is edifying. This is um an article from the BBC Science Focus magazine. Uh it says, Why your thoughts may not be private for much longer. And we 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 see these things coming, but a lot of a lot of people don't see these things coming and you have Hebrew Israelite camps out here that's teaching that this type of stuff is not going to lead to buying or selling you know the 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 MOTB is what we call it the mark of the beauty and the beast you know which I'm gonna get in Revelation 13 16 you have one main group out here now I'm not sure if this guy is really worth as much money as they're saying he is but if he is he has absolutely no, um, I mean, he if he's making the kind of money that he's making, he's not going to tell you Israelites the truth of the matter of what's really going on out here. He's no different than a um, regular old pastor. And I'm talking about um, Bishop Nathaniel from IUIC, the, the, uh, the camp that wears the purple and yellow. You know, they, they had to pass over the guy rode in on a horse, <laughs> you know, but now I've seen hookups where this guy supposedly be worth 150 million dollars so of course he's not going to tell his congregants you know the real truth that is this revelation 13 16 if he's making that kind of money it's, it, it's just not going to happen man he's no different than a td jakes or the creflo dollar or you know joel osteen hey, it's all about just pulling up let me give you a sermon real quick i have the people's hearts i have their minds basically and i don't have to do nothing but just you know throw them a few treats each week and they're going to come and give me tithes, offerings, or whatever, whatever, you know. So, anyway, let's get into this. And I'll, you know, as we roll in the spirit, we'll just see what comes to play, man. But this is getting real out here. It says, um, we need to rethink our human rights for the wearable tech of tomorrow. According to neurotechnology neurote ethics expert, Professor Nita Farahani, through new tech, we're now able to track our steps, our heart rates, and even our vascular age. But as future technology advances, there is a new metric access our brain waves. New brain sensors promise much, but as Nita Far Farahani, an author and professor specializing in the ethics, <coughs> Slaki, ethics and emerging technologies explains, we may need to readdress our basic human rights to prepare for them. It says, are there really now devices that can access our brainwaves? Of course it is, man. Hey, you got uh, Elon Musk and them. You got these um, there's a few other countries. I mean, companies that's, you know, hey, they already got stuff like this in play. They're actually already implanting these things into people, man. And, and supposedly bringing forth miracles, you know. Now you can all of a sudden do things that you weren't able to do before physically, right? It says, yes, but it's a question about a scale. It's a question of both scale and precision. There are millions of consumer brain wearables sold worldwide, and it is. These are in the form of headbands or sensors that can be embedded into a hard hat, see, or a baseball cap to track brain activity. The algorithms, and that goes off into this NFL with the, you know, the, the shoulder pads and the helmets, and, uh, and they're able to track these, um, these athletes, every move, man, heart rate. Hey, what do you think happened with LeBron and them? Uh, well, the NBA went into the bubble down at um, Disneyland during COVID, and they had those rings on. I forgot what the name of those rings are, but, you know, it was able to access their sleep. It was able to see who was going anywhere or, you know, it, it was tracking everything when it was out there in that bubble, man. You see? So they're able to do this stuff. And this is what it's all boiling down to. If you think the white man, so-called white man, is, is right here with this, you think he's going to stop? It's just like, oh, well, we're just going to leave that technology alone. In the future, it could be invasible. We, you know, we want to protect the people's rights and privacies. Hell no, man. This man going to want, he's, he, he can never have enough. The scriptures talks about <laughs> this man can never have enough. He, he's going to go to the full extent of, you know, shit, if he could do it, had a damn baby implanted while it's still in the mother's womb. 
<laughs> it's nothing for them to do that, man. They they out here they 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 doing all kinds of shit already. Okay. It says um the algorithms interpreting that activity, but right now they're they are somewhat limited in what they can do. They can decode someone's attention, engagement, if their mind is wandering, and basic emotions like stress, happiness, or sadness. See? Major tech companies are investing in, in, in integrating brain sensors in the same way we see heart rate monitors and watches and rings. Integrating brain sensors into everyday devices like earbuds, headphones, or even wearable tattoos. See that? Some companies have announced they, that they plan to launch a neural interface as a way to interact with the rest of our technology in augmented and virtual reality by 2025. So they're moving on this stuff pretty quick. Now check this out, because I remembered this. Um, one of the, the brothers, he, he posted this. This is in China right here, right? This is, What's up? This is for educational purposes only. But, and I really don't even have to play the video like that, but you can go into it. I just put in, you know... Um, brainwaves you know china um brainwave sensors because i remember seeing the video actually you can put in this title right here but as you can see the children in the class they have on these wearables and shit the one little boy he was like his mom and <laughs> i guess he got his ass whooped when he got home because these wearables that are on these children heads the teacher can see on a computer if they're paying attention they can see on a computer a computer they're sitting at their desk and they're monitoring each one of these children's brain waves to see if they're actually paying attention to the curriculum and what they're doing if they get distracted it picks up on all these things and then at the end of the class it shoots a message or email or a text message to the parents to show that their children wasn't paying attention in school so so the one kid he basically like you know I don't know if they you know they they basically you know whooped his ass or something like that but you know he got in trouble you know for not paying attention because you know see these these so-called chinese people they take education real serious because they have no physical attributes you know they have they, they use their mind you know their brain to pretty much do what they do throughout the world because you can see how flimsy they are you know they might show you a kung fu movie or some shit like they're so damn big and bad you know like a jet lee or somebody you know <laughs> or you know you know you get what i'm saying like you know they 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 make their own movies and and make it seem as if they have this thing with kung fu but they're so fucking small man that shit not gonna work on nobody like that you know don't get me wrong you know it, it, it's lethalness to 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 um you know those particular types of fighting tactics and stuff like that but generally when you see a damn um moabite or a uh, 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 ammonite which is the biblical name for the so-called Chinese and so-called Japanese. They're generally flimsy as hell. They be bumping in the shit. They look, uh, let me just keep it classy. I ain't gonna keep it going. But they're not, you know, all like that, like that. But I, I remembered this video. Now also, let me see here, since I'm already in here. Now the brother, he just put up this video. I was just watching this one. And, and this is the, the group that I was talking about, IUIC. Now. Right. I want y'all to keep this in mind. I'm going to show y'all something. I need y'all to pay close and attention. And the brother put up the perfect scripture. Yeah, I have not sent these prophets. See, this man this right here, he's out here telling telling our people. He has a large congregation. He's telling our people that the, 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 this MOT, this market of beauty and Watch this is sin. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. And it's not this technology that they're coming with. And actually, the videos that he was telling them to pull up, like, you know, you can um, pull this up. This is GMS Watchmen those are great videos um the title on this is um is iuic bishop nathaniel explain motb in 2023 and mocks great millstone see and that's what they've been doing mocking great millstone but great millstone you know gms they've been telling the people the truth but this man like i said if he's worth the kind of money that he's worth and 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 pay pay attention and look out for these pastors that's out here to have 501c3 charters man that's dealing with the government because if they have that 501c3 charter and they're tax free through the government, they have a gag order, man. It's only so much information they can tell you. They can't just stand on the on stage and tell a alphabet person, an LGBT or whatever, whatever that, you know, the Lord is going to destroy you. You're going <laughs> you, they can't you know, they're not going to touch on those subjects. They are just going to tell you certain things. They're going to keep you happy, give you bread and circus, give you a little bit of music, and then they're going to pass along a collection plate. They're not going to tell you the full truth. But these things are in the news. It's clearly people that's got the damn thing in them, swiping it over a, a program scanner or whatever, and they're purchasing shit with it, man. 
So you can't say that this is not out here. And this is one of the main prophecies that's on, on the books, man. But let me get what he was just going into. Look, don't listen to these, these, these pastors, man. If this man is really worth $150 million and he has a 501c3 charter where he don't have to pay no taxes on that shit, he's not obligated to tell you the truth, man. <laughs> you know, because, you know, his God is his belly, man. His God is his belly. And they like, um, never mind. Hey, you, hey. These men are just as, you know, needable <laughs> as the, the real prophets, man. Because the Lord is going to send, uh, for, I mean, you know, hey, it's going to be false prophets that's going to be out here. Because the Lord does things in twos. There's going to be a real prophet and there's going to be a false prophet. And the Lord is in control of both of them. He's in control of who's hearing what, man. But anyway, let's get this. Revelation 13, 16. This is one of the last major prophecies that's going to happen on the planet, man, before our Lord comes. That's why it's so important to go into these things. Revelation 13 and 16. And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, a, a, a perfect example of them doing their research and doing data collecting was when COVID went down, man. They locked everybody into the house. They, they, they was able to see how many people was going to comply, how many people was going to buck up against what they had going on. You had people out here getting arrested over masks. You had people that was getting arrested over, you know, shit that they would, you know, a bunch of nurses and doctors and all kinds of people was being fired for going against the information. Then you had this misinformation, disinformation. You had medical this, though, you know, so they done their research. They know they have all the research that they need now to implement the, the great, great go ahead. Their great, great reset, man. They know what they're going to have to do. And, and, and basically, they're, they're, they're in control of all the resources. If your kids are sitting next to you crying, hungrier than a motherfucker, and a man, all he's telling you is, is we'll feed you. We have this for you. Just come down to um, certain, such and such, such and such street, and we're going to have doctors in, in, on, on deck. And, you know, and um, you, they're going to use something, of course, to get you there, you know, because it's all slithery and this deception that's just how that so-called white man gets now he is the devil that's why the description talks about the devil coming down with great wrath that, that word devil goes into slanderer an adversary basically man he's not going to tell you the truth he's going to tell you hey look well all right we can solve your problem come down here bring the kids <laughs> we're going to put this little injection thing in them so we can you know track and 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 and, and you know they're going to give you the song and dance about why they're doing it but we have what you need. We have water. We have food. We have medicine. And a lot of people are going to be looking at their children like, uh, I got to do this. And then they're going to be looking at the people in the household that don't want to do it because it's people that's going to know this shit, man. They know that it's going to be half the people pretty much like, oh, no, nah, I know what that is. That's Revelation 13, 16. I know what that is. I'm not going. Then you're going to have one spouse in the household that's like, but the children, we must feed the children. We got to do this. Look at our babies. They're going hungry and you know, so it's going to be a, a <laughs> an all out fight in the households, man, for, for stuff like this. It says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you're dealing with this. So what what's going to happen then? Now, this is the great test, though. This is this is the great, great test, man. Matter of fact, let's get a. Uh, Cause you want to be under the the, the you want to be under the, the the rooftop of your how about Shemuel Shah in these last days, man. You don't want to be out here dependent upon the so-called white man for shit, man. Revelations two and ten it says, "Fear none of those things which shalt thou, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil ca shall cast some of you in, into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have great tribulation ten days." Be thou fear, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Let me get that back from the top. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, because there's gonna be some things that's gonna come, man. You know, some some hey, this this thing is gonna be it's not gonna be an easy ride into the kingdom, man. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. So the 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 ones, and it's gonna be people that's not believers. There is gonna be um, heathens that's going to be thrown in the jail for not believing in this, man. Going with the so-called white man in this hookup. But the men of the Lord, 
they're going to be going off into uh, off into these prisons on, on the sake of righteousness. I believe in, in Yahweh. I believe in his son, Yahweh Shai. And hey, we're fighting this fight, spiritual fight of faith to the end. You know, knowing the reason why you're going to prison. These other people, they really they, they just just going to be going, you know, because of something that they heard. They, they they feel as if they know the scripture. You know, they you know, they believe that 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 chippity chip chip is the mark of the beauty and the beast. But they're doing it. They have a zeal for God, so to speak, but not according to knowledge. They're not going to know that it's not really for them, but they're not going to go for it. A lot of them, you know, they, and then, you know, so-called white people, they're proud. They, they believe in their freedoms. You know, I'll be damned if you're going to put something in me, you know, that type of shit. But anyway, fear none of those things which shall, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. What does that mean? You may be tried. What they're going to do is they're going to see, well, let's see if he's going to stick to that name, Yahweh. Let's see if he's going to stick to that name, Yahweh Shai. Let's see if he's going to stick to these biblical principles once we get him in here and we get to doing the things that we're going to do to him. You see? Because there's going to come a hey, torture tactics, uh, 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 starvation tactics. Hell, who knows? Waterboarding. We don't know what these people, you know, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, he's a capable of any fucking thing, man. It says, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. See, and I will give thee a crown of life. So that's the main focus that we're supposed to be having, being faithful unto death and pray to the Lord for that, because that's that's going to be. We can all say what we won't do right now, because nothing is, you know, happening to us, on, you know, you know, to that extent right now. But when they actually physically have you and walking you somewhere into a dark place <laughs> or whatever, blindfolded, dropping you off somewhere, you who fucking knows, man. We're praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he will give us what it would take to be faithful unto death, endurance, man. But anyway, let's go back to the article. Let's see what else they had in there. Because like I said, this group right here, IUIC, they're leading a lot of people astray, man, as far as Israel, man. And it's a few of these groups. It's a few of these um, um, Hebrew Israelite groups, man, that don't believe that um, the MOTB, this, this thing that these people are trying to put into your ass, has nothing to do with the last day's prophecies, man. It's incredible, man. This man is saying it's sin. If it's sin, I mean, hell, Adam had the mark of the beast then. You know? Eve had it. Then uh, throughout time, people have had it. So what, what is he talking about? It's incredible, man. Anyway. It says, um, what is it that these brain scans are actually measuring? These are not mind reading devices. They can't understand or detail thoughts or they come. Hey, you get Esau long enough. He will be able to do it. <laughs> he will be able to do it. It says one common technology used is electro. Encephalography. EEG. OK. Which picks up electrical activity in your brain. As you're thinking or experiencing anything, neurons are firing in your brain in a way that sends characteristic patterns, giving off tiny electrical discharges that can be picked up by EEG through powerful algorithms. These patterns are decoded. From this, we can measure attention, mind wandering, and basic feelings and emotions. See, this is what I'm talking about, right? It says, let me, if we're able to crack open the brain, how would this affect the mental health and well-being space? See, they, they're going into a, a few things. Could this trigger a brain hypochondriac movement? I'm telling you, man, this man is out of his goddamn mind, man. <laughs> it says, often technology is created and then question of ethics is addressed at a later stage. What can we do beforehand to get ahead? You're not going to be able to do nothing, man. What is cognitive liberty and why is it so important anyway? It is... is is this definitely a technology of the future or could this be a Google Glass or Metaverse situation? See, so, it, it, you know, those are questions to be asked. I'm not going to go too far off into it. I just wanted to just touch on it real quick because, hey, we're living in the last days, man. We are in the end of this thing. And, and, and if they're talking about stuff like this, you best believe you don't man a U.S. Army. The military of the U these so-called white people in their militaries, if they're giving you just this, this look, <laughs> they had this technology they had long ago, long, long ago. Because I can remember one time. What was that? I think. Let me see if that's uh, maybe I'm tripping. 
I remember when, you know, when I was younger, it was Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton gave a speech on the television um, being mind control. I think he was apologizing. Let me see. Let me see. TV mind control. Let me try that. Because they've been doing this. This has been a long time, man. They got, yep, Bill Clinton apologized for a Tuskegee experiment. You Negroes, boy. Y'all better get on, man. Y'all better realize these people don't like you. Clinton apologized for radiation tests. <laughs> hey, so, I mean, these people, man. Clinton apologizes for, for secret Cold War era radiation experiment. experiment. See? President Clinton, he apologizes for syphilis experiment. So these people, I'm telling you, man. Bill Clinton says he made mass incarceration issue worse. <laughs> See? I wanted to find the one, though, because it was an apology. No. It says he wasn't, um, anyway. Clinton apologized for test on blacks. See, and this is why we tell y'all, man, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, don't trust these fucking people. The scripture says never trust thine enemy because who you think they're going to test on first? You niggas. That's the reason why they came so hard. And uh, yeah, we have to do something about you. You, um, you, you so-called blacks. We love you so much. You're, um, you know, uh, disproportionately affected by the COV-19, the worst. And we have to get to you first. We have to we have to save you first. We love you so much. Look at this as um, our way of saying sorry for um, all the shit we put you through for the past 500 years. And a lot of Jake took their stupid asses out here and they went for what this man said. So when it straight comes down to this particular type of technology, when they're ready to rock, they're going to be pushing it on you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans first. You Israelites, because that's your biblical nationality. They, they really want to perpetually enslave you. They want the Israelites. This is who the so-called white man is, is reaching and grasping for, and he's working so hard. This man gets up on a day-to-day -day basis to figure out, how can I become their Lord? How can I become their God? How can I further get them to denounce their God and, and it's perpetually so now they're mine and they will never belong to the Lord? This is how this man thinks. This is what this man is trying to do. But he's not going to be able to get to the elect of Israel, man. And the Lord has given this man a, a real weird delusion because he's delusional man to really think that he's doing he's going to be able to you know do what he's trying to do but the lord has given that you know has blinded this fucker like that man but anyway i don't want to keep this you know going to this too much more further hey, the information is out here it's something to definitely most definitely look into you know because and this this one right here too i would say definitely check out the brothers um it was just a nine minute video but this guy right here man from iuic matter of fact you know what since it's on my mind let's let's just see let's just see if it's really this guy can't be worth 150 million dollars if this should pop up Oh, there you go, right there. Damn. That shit might be, well, shit, damn. What? Man. Hey, you think that this guy would teach you? This guy, well, come on, man. That's why the scripture talks about um that filthy lucre. I think that's one of the prerequisites of being a bishop. It's not being greedy for filthy lucre, man. Says Bishop Nathaniel was a businessman and the founder of Israel United in Christ. He has accumulated a great fortune through his business ventures as well as his role as the head of a church. Bishop Nathaniel is highly respected figure in the Christian community. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, he's he's no different than a Christian pastor. He, he's you know most high God in Christ. Bless. <laughs> you know he won't say the true name of the Father Yahweh. He won't say the true name of the Son Yahweh Shai. He's telling the people, we really don't know what the names are. But guess what? They have 
Hebrew names. They had paleo. They get the he. They, they the congregants have paleo Hebrew names, but you acting as if you don't know what the paleo Hebrew means or what 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 what's it saying. So you won't say the true name of the Lord. You know why he can't? Because he has that five hundred one c three charter, man. It says, um, Bishop Nathaniel was a highly respected figure in the Christian community, and his net worth reflects his success. <laughs> Today, we're going to know about Bishop Nathaniel's net worth, age, height, weight, wife. Okay. What is he worth? Bishop Nathaniel's net worth is well-known businessman and the founder of U Israel United in Christ. He has an estimated net worth of $150 million. I, I mean, I would have never had no idea on that until the, one of the brothers posted it. And it's known for his uh, philanthropic work. He has been a strong advocate for social justice and has worked tirelessly to improve the lives of those less fortunate. He is a man of great faith and conviction. His work has inspired many people around the world. Bishop Nathaniel Networth is a powerful force for good in the world. And his work has made pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whew. Hey, so he been building and growing. Hey, I, hey, I was wondering because I'm looking like, God damn, them, 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 them outfits they be wearing. Them motherfuckers look like they worth some bread, boy. He's a businessman and founder whose yearly income is around 7.5 million USD. His monthly income is around 600K. So this motherfucker, man, look. And who you, where you think this money is coming from? This is no different than being going to T.D. Jake's church. Come on, man. Well, come on, man. He's he's this is nothing but a Hebrew Israelite Christian church twist still teaching white Jesus, man. But anyway, you get what it is. I can see now why he would not tell you that this is the this MOTB is something that the so-called white man is trying to implement and put into your ass and perpetually enslave you. And you know what? With the amount of money that he got and his congregants, they'll take that shit. To keep his money going, to keep that 150 million, and it's steadily growing. So shit, if he's making 600 k a month. <laughs> by next year he'll be at 200 and some change million he's not about to let that go man more than likely man he he, he will go and, and and be the first one in his congregation to sign up for the MOTB and let them fuckers put a goddamn implant in him so you so called hey you Israelites man you so called blacks Hispanics and Native Americans you're in these Hebrew Israelite camps you need to be uh, 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 asking questions, man. Ask them really. What, what, if they don't want to say that the MOTB is, 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 you know. Say, for instance, if somebody like Nate is telling you that it's sin, then ask him what is going on with all these implant things that's going on in the world. Why is so much shit becoming digital? Ask him to explain to you the CBDC, the central bank um, digital hookups that's going on. Why are there so many places going digital? Why are there so many places not accepting cash anymore? What's happening? What, what, what's this leading to? And if he can't give you a clear answer, which you should be able to see it by now, you should be getting the fuck away from somebody like that, man. I was telling my brother that one of my brothers follow um, IUIC when we first came into the truth. You know, he kind of went that way. I, I veered towards the way of um, GMS, you know, and, um, you know, all praises to you. How about Shimmy? I was shy. But these people right here, they're not telling you the truth. When somebody is making that amount of money, that's why the scriptures talks about it. Is, you know, a rich man. Let me see. How is it worded? I don't want to butcher it because it's hard for people to give up that kind of money, man. It's hard for people to get. Now, I'm not saying that he couldn't, but I highly doubt if he would, man. <laughs> for real. From the looks of things. Oh, no, no. Because he calls the other camps. What he, well, he calls GMS bum camps. Because GMS is not out here all flashy like them. They're not riding in to um, palladiums on fucking horses and, you know, and got these big extravagant events going on and fashion shows and shit. So GMS, the, the very man that he learned under. Apostle Tahar, he's calling that the caller calling the apostle a damn bum, man. <laughs> so hey, just be aware of these people, man. Let me see what else we uh Matthew 19 and 24. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. It's real simple, man. And that eye of a needle, we're not talking about a sewing needle. Even, you know, that's what I used to think when I was a Christian, you know, when I was first reading that. But if you, you know, understand the history of, you know, real camels, you know, it, there would be like a hole in a, in a wall or a rock, so to speak. And, and, and that herdsman would have to get that camel to kneel down 
and, and try and get that big ass camel with his hump and everything through that small rock space to get him through into the city, so to speak. You know, that's another lesson though. But anyway, I just wanted to touch on this, man. Hey, don't fall for the for the bullshit when it comes to this MOTB, man. This thing is real. It is on our heels. And it this shit could happen at any point in the game. It's nothing. Hey, these brick nations, they're dropping this dollar like crazy these other nations it's all in the news it's all right before us the lord said to watch and pray man these are the very things we need to be watching for for real so with that i pray that the lesson was edifying